Hello friends, welcome to the Vibe of Awesome Anatomy. Today we will see the cavity of the third ventricle. Now the cavity of the third ventricle is a mid-lying slit-like cavity which is lies between the two diencephalon, mainly between the thalamus and the hypothalamus. The cavity of the third ventricle is lined by the ciliated columnar epithelium and the ependyma and it extends from the lamina terminalis anteriorly to the commencement of a cerebral aqueduct posteriorly. Now the cerebral aqueduct, uh, uh, the cavity of the third ventricle is communicate anteriorly on the either side, each side with the cavity of the lateral ventricle through the interventricular foramina or a foramina of Munro. Whereas the posteriorly it communicate with the cavity of the fourth ventricle through the cerebral aqueduct of a midbrain. <coughs> now we see the boundary of a third ventricle. The third ventricle is having the anterior wall, posterior wall, roof, floor and the lateral wall. The anterior wall is formed from above downwards, the anterior column of the fornix, the anterior commissure and the lamina terminalis. The posterior wall of the third ventricle is formed uh, from above downwards by a pineal body, the posterior commissure which is lies in the inferior lamina of a stalk of the pineal body and the commencement starting of a cerebral aqueduct. The roof is formed by the ependyma that is connecting the two thalamus and this floor is for, formed from above, uh, uh, from anterior to posteriorly by the optic chiasma, the infundibulum of a hypophysis cerebri, the mammillary body, the posterior perforated sub substance and the tegmentum of a midbrain. The last part, the lateral wall. The lateral wall is marked by a one curved sulcus which is known as a hypothalamic sulcus, this one. The hypothalamic sulcus is extend from the foramina of Mundro to the commencement of a cerebral aqueduct. And this hypothalamic sulcus divides the cavity into uh, two parts, the larger upper part which is made up of a thalamus and the smaller lower part which is made up of a hypothalamus. In the smaller, uh, in, in the larger upper part, you can see the bundle of the fibers which is known as an interthalamic adhesion which is connecting the two thalema. Now the cavity of the third ventricle is extending into the surrounding structure and from the pocket like protrusion which is known as a recesses. Now we see the recesses of third ventricle, they are five in the number. The first one is an infundibular recess, this one. The infundibular recess is a deep tunnel shaped recess which is going into the infundibulum of the hypophysis cerebri. The second is an optic recess or a chiasmaticus recess. That is an angular recess which lies at the junction of the anterior wall and the floor of the third ventricle. This is a angular recess, optic or a chiasmaticus recess. The third recess is known as an anterior recess or a vulva of the third ventricle. This one is an anterior recess or the vulva of the third ventricle that lies between the anterior commissure and the foramen of Mundro. Now the last two recesses lies in the posterior wall, they are very small blind diverticuli. The first one is a suprapineal recess, the suprapineal recess lies above the pineal gland. Here lies the suprapineal recess and the last one is a pineal recess that lies between the superior and the inferior lamina of a stalk of the pineal gland. This is the pineal recess. So these are the five recesses of a third ventricle. Now the coronal plexus of the third ventricle, it lies in the roof. It is hanging downwards from the tela choroida. Tela choroida is lies in the roof of the third ventricle and from the tela choroida the choroid plexus is hanging downward entero posteriorly in the cavity of the third ventricle. Now the applied anatomy of the third ventricle, the, this cavity is a very small slit like cavity. So it is get easily blocked by the tumors of the surrounding structure of the brain 
or sometimes congenitally. So if it is blocked, the CSF circulation is obstructed from the lateral ventricle to the fourth ventricle. So it will accumulate in the cavity of the lateral ventricle, which will produce the raised intracranial tension in the adult and the hydrocephalus in case of the children. This obstruction we can identify by the ventriculography. So this is all about the third ventricle. Thank you. If you like this video, like it and share with your friends. And to get the regular update on the anatomy videos, please subscribe to our channel and click on the bell icon.